Alright, what's up y'all? So this is how I made Exit Life. I'm gonna let you listen to the beat here for a minute. And then we'll get into it. Okay. So the first thing with Exit Life that I started with was the 808 and the snare. And I just laid those down. And once I felt like those things were slapping, um, then I just built out the rest of the perks. I didn't add a kick transient because I didn't really feel like it needed something that knocked, but rather something that bounced. And the 808s were already really doing that on their own, so I just left them be. Okay. Next thing I did was I added these hi-hats. Got a solid drum groove going on. And then I added in these perks. And these perks were just like... These perks were basically just like a... Uh, a stock loop from Logic, I think, that I took, and I just kind of played around with it and just kind of cut them up and, the way that I wanted and just added that uh, on top of the groove that I already had. So again, together, all that sounded like this. And once I was feeling pretty good about that, um, you know, I needed a melody delayer on top of it. So I just knew that I wanted to find something dark, something sort of mysterious sounding. Um, spooky season was coming up, so I wanted something that sounded haunting. And I found, I totally forget what melodies I looked up. I was running through some loops in Logic, and I honestly don't even remember what loops I took out of here but out of Logic's stock loop bank I just found something a couple of things that I liked some bells and um, like I think like a flute and I layered those together and I half timed it and it came out sounding like this I felt like that just fit really well with what I was going for, you know, something haunting, something Halloween-y, and I layered it on top of what I had, and I felt good about it. So once I was rocking with all that, I just built out the arrangement, uh, you know, built in a verse, and for the verse part, I actually ducked out the 808 at certain parts, put in a kick. You know, added that in there. Um, and then I made the switch up part. Because I knew I wanted the melody to do something different there. And I wanted it to be something sort of like nails on a chalkboard, something grating, you know, um, just like menacing and weird. And uh, so I, what I tried doing was I just took this melody right here, our main melody. I ran it through a vocoder, Waves vocoder, OVOX. Whoops. And this is what it, it changed up. It changed up like this. Yeah, and it was really as simple as that. Just threw on that vocoder and it got across the sort of sound that I, and feeling that I wanted. So this little break right before the chorus uh, wasn't originally there. I changed that up for certain reasons that I'll explain later in the video to y'all. But uh, just built out the next chorus. For the second verse, for the sec second section here, I just took the main melody that we have uh, tuned it down like five semitones. And it just gave everything this darker, more menacing vibe. I, I really fucked with it, and I already had a vision of who I wanted 
to be over that part. So I was already building the vision at this point. So then we have this little build up section at the end here. Where everything just kind of breaks out and it's just the percussions. And I just thought that'd be fun. I wanted it to just kind of have this. I wanted us to just have this moment where everything kind of breaks down. And we have these energetic drums building up to the last chorus. Um, I don't know. I thought it'd be fun just to kind of switch up the feeling there. So once I got that final chorus built out there, um, you know, added another percussive layer for the intro. Um, the, originally, the intro was just like the last build up there. I just put in these this perk build up. And didn't do anything with that yet because I was waiting. I knew I'd get an artist on there and then I'd um, build out the intro using their vocals and whatever else. So once I had everything done, I saved it, titled it Exit Life. And that just tends to be whatever I titled beats and stuff. It just kind of tends to be a working title. Um, I know that it'll probably change when I send it to an artist, but in this case it didn't. The dot in the exit life was actually by accident. Um, when I start typing stuff on my keyboard when it's overheating, it just randomly types stuff sometimes. And so the exit dot life um, was by accident because my overheated keyboard, but I ended up keeping it because I just thought it looked cool. And it's kind of a cool way to differentiate your title from other titles that are the same that might exist out there so it makes our exit life stand out from other exit lives um picnic satellites was the same way when i titled picnic satellites my keyboard randomly typed in that second i in there that's why it has two eyes in it it's just because my keyboard overheats and starts going crazy and uh has a mind of its own but it kind of helps with coming up with creative and interesting looking titles so once I got the beat done, I already knew I wanted DNR to be on that second verse where it gets lower. I could really hear his voice over it while I was making it, so he was definitely the clear choice for me. There was no question. I've been rocking with him for a while, but he really got my attention uh, when he dropped a song called Necrotic Grip. That song was so hauntingly beautiful that, um, I don't know, I was listening to it over and over again um, and knew I wanted to work with him, so... For the hook in the main verse, I knew I wanted something really screamy, really aggressive, and so I mean the natural instinct was to go with Nico. He'd been really on some next level shit, so um, it was the obvious choice. We have this great musical chemistry together, and I think that we work together really well as a team. So I hit him up, and he did his thing. Now when I got his vocals back and listened to it for the first time, it was different than what I had imagined. You know, I was imagining something more aggressive and screamy. Um, something more, I don't care. But he expressed that he didn't want it to be like, I don't care, I want it to be different. So initially, I wasn't feeling it. But something I know about myself is my first impression about something oftentimes doesn't accurately reflect how I feel about it. Uh, later. So many times when I listen to something and the first time I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. But when I come back to it later um, and listen to it over and over, I'm like, you know what? That's my favorite song now. That happens to me all the time. So, um, you know, I just gave it a minute and I found myself like playing it over and over in my head, you know, humming the chorus to myself. And so, you know, that's when I knew like, oh, this, this is catchy. This is good. I kind of like that situation because it's kind of the uh, the opposite of what happened with I Don't Care Anymore, where I sent him the track and his first reaction was like, uh, I don't know about this. But then after giving it a minute, after listening to it for a while, it really grew on him. This time it was kind of like how the turn tables. All right, so I got Nico's Vox back. And at this point, I've worked with this Vox like a handful of times. So I, you know, the process was relatively smooth. I have a lot of presets and everything already set up for him, so I know what to do, I know what he likes. Uh, my main focus was to really put his ad-libs into an interesting space. What I mean by that is put them in an interesting space, like timing-wise in the music, and also putting them into an interesting uh, 
just like sonic space, uh, like a physical space. And I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean. So initially his ad libs were kind of gridded up here in a different order, but I liked it organized like this. Fight him. All right, put a bullet in the pipe like good night, fair booty. I'll just I kind of wanted it to be like I kind of wanted those ad libs to hit in a spot where his main vocals uh, didn't clash or interfere with it. So, cause I heard you wanna fight him, a hey, I want a bullet in the pipe like bitch, you know. And I wanted it to be kind of organized in a way like that so that it wouldn't really clash with anything. Found that empty pocket to fill. Fight him. All right, put a bullet in the pipe like Bitch. good night. Fair booty, I'll just buy you get John like Mike. Yeah, I'm yeah, with the knife. You don't exit Go. life because I heard you won't fight him. All right, all right. So, finding that interesting spot to put them in so that it could stand out a little bit and have its moment was important to me. And then putting him into an interesting physical space is also something that I wanted to do. So I routed them. I sent them to this uh, this reverb right here. And as you can hear, it's this really like sort of dense reverb. It's very like cavernous and feels like it's in, uh, I don't know, it's a really interesting space I felt like. So that's just a, uh, send it to this Valhalla room. And then I cut out a lot of it here um, in sort of the, the mids, in higher mids, so that it doesn't clash too much with the main vocal. Um, added a second reverb. And then, let's see. Oh, gave it some stereo space. Looks like I saturated it a bit. And then, I thought I had it. Do I have it sidechained to the main... I don't know. I guess I have it side chain to. I have it side chain to the kick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Anyways, I just wanted to have this really interesting and dark, eerie sort of space. So um, I don't know. It, to me, it kind of feels like it's in this dark cavern or a cave. So I thought that was interesting. And then for the pre-hook here, I change up the reverb so that it sounds more like um, it's in like a close room or something. Me and my niggas are and y'all hate it. I live in y'all bitches start in the basement. Place your you hear how the reverb now has like a shorter decay. And for the switch up, I just wanted it to feel like it was in a different space. Um, especially because like everything, the melody switches up, right? At this point, the melody is doing this thing. In the main melody here, um, the, the, um, vocoder that I ran that melody through to create this, remember, kind of has, it, it created this sort of like artificial noise in it too. I don't know if you can hear that white noise in it. But so it just puts it in an interesting space. So I wanted the reverb to kind of switch up there too. Going ape shit and when I unzip nuts, bounce off the ground, I'm too gangster. Y'all got. Yeah. Wanted to play around with those vocals, make them sound interesting, um, and really highlight the ad libs, make those something special, something fun. Now, uh, the intro was a place of interest. So um, Nico had sent me all these. He had all these different takes, all these different intros going on. And initially, I just took one of those and isolated one of those takes and used that for the intro. Sent it to Nico to, for him to listen to, and he wasn't really feeling it. He was like, I wanted to keep all those things the way I had them, keep them colliding together and stuff um, so that it sounds super chaotic. The reason why I, I went with just one of those takes was... Uh, uh, listening to them all together at once, unmixed, sounded, I don't know, it, so, it sounded too chaotic to me, and it was all just a jumbled mess, right? But I agreed with him in that it really needed some chaotic energy there, uh, something crazy to happen, and so I realized it was just about organizing the chaos and making that 
into something. So I decided to keep all that in there, keep all of his takes together. But it wasn't once I organized them and put them all into their own sort of stereo space, I realized it didn't really sound chaotic enough. So I had this idea to kind of put some live crowd cheering and stuff in there to kind of fill in the chaotic space and and give it that sort of crazy energy. So I took a couple of videos from the Outcast Block Instagram page. Uh, hit up Nico for some live footage that he had, uh, put it all together, and uh, organized it all. I, I took all that chaos, organized it, put it all together, and this is what it sounded like. And I was really fucking with that, but I just took all those takes that I had, um, all that audio and live footage, just kind of put it into its own space in the frequency spectrum, put it into its own stereo space to give it some organization, and I don't know, came out sounding pretty good in my ears. Okay, so I forgot to mention this part. Uh, in Nico's recording, he had this sort of tail to his uh, to his verse, right? And he kind of has this lead in also to his to his chorus part that he came up with. So initially, the way I had this arranged and set up, they were kind of colliding together, and it just didn't sound. It sounded like this. Your bitch I heard you won't fight him. All right, put a book. Sounds really messy, and so I decided to make a change in the arrangement, put that back. And just kind of give it some, some breathing space. <laughs> and luckily, I felt like the line, because you, your bitch gonna save her this dick. I felt like that was kind of a good line to just let sort of hang in the air for a minute. So yeah, I just decided to do that. Um, then just like threw in this sample there to fill in some space. Dick. Cause I heard you won't fight him. All right, put a bullet in. <laughs> you know, just trying to find something related or something that sounded funny. And so then I did the same thing over b before this next chorus. Um, and I really wanted a, uh, I don't know, like an interesting sample there. I ended up going, finding it going with this. What? You thought it was fake, nigga? I just fit with the song real well. Um, as a placeholder audio, I initially had like, uh, what's that stupid rapper's name? <laughs> I initially had some audio from like, I think it's like Bad Baby in there or something. <laughs> that kind of worked, but it was funny. But um, it wasn't the right feeling for this song, right? Like that's something I do with Zanuck and Skywalk, but but not with this track. So I ended up finding something way better. So after I got Nico's part mixed and everything ready and prepared, I wanted to make sure I sent something that was exciting for DNR, that he'd feel like it was something that he wanted to be a part of. So I sent it over to him and luckily he was uh, on board. He got back to me real quick, just took him maybe a couple days. And um, yeah, I mean, throughout the whole process, he was just a super, cool guy and super chill and yeah i mean working with him was a breeze and i would love to work with him again all right so dnr sent me his vox and they were already mixed really well uh already sounded pretty good so i didn't do a whole lot i just kind of added some effects here and there and uh just kind of cleaned it up a little bit to make it fit in the project file that i had a little bit better and <laughs> it's the first time i've seen bass frequencies in in vocals before like my man had like sub frequencies going on like <laughs> sound like the goddamn grim reaper or something I will deal with myself. but i i just kind of cleaned up uh those lower frequencies a little bit and just kind of um yeah organized it and when i got his vocals though i accidentally i gritted up his um little intro part here or I guess if you want to call it like a pre-verse, I if you, I guess 
but this was actually Nico's idea. So when Nico recorded his part, he had these, you know, these fights. Right? He recorded it like that, and he had this idea of just either letting the beat ride out or having DNR do something there. I'll have DNR come in right after the first chorus and then have it switch out to Nico's verse. I felt like that would be interesting and keep the listener on their feet. And I thought, I agree with him. I thought that'd be pretty cool. So I told DNR about that and he came up with this. So that's how I initially had him gridded up um as you can hear the timing is a little bit different than than you hear on the track and that's because i accidentally put him i actually put this vocal like a half a beat late and he pointed that out to me and i switched it back to this and honestly i think both things sound really good but i felt like the way that he had it the way he, that he recorded it sounded best, so uh, I agree with him on that and decided to keep it that way. Well, there wasn't nothing too special about the mastering process it didn't, or the release. The release went really smoothly this time. Um, uh, you know, Nico and I have already worked together on I Don't Care Anymore, so we have everything already set up. Not So, uh, yeah, not, not a whole lot to talk about this time around, but um, the, uh, the artwork is done by Martyr. I initially had like a completely different idea for it, but me and Martyr and Nico all hopped on a call one day to get the artwork sorted out, and all of our d ideas combined kind of is kind of like what it came out to be. I think it looks dope. Martyr has this really unique style that I think no one else out there has, and I really, really fuck with that. So yeah, I hope you guys like it. It kind of ended up being a... Uh, it was very like sinister, the movie inspired, combined with I don't care anymore. Um, it's kind of what it came out to be. But anyways, I hope you guys like it. The man Zetsu did the AMV for my channel. Uh, you know, Vibes did a AMV edit on their channel, which is just fucking crazy. Both of them are mind blowing. Shoutouts to Blade for making his edit. Uh, that shit was fire. I don't know why it's down on his channel right now. Maybe I guess he got copyrighted or something. But uh, that video was a lot of fun to watch. I know a lot of y'all came from the the Cuff Boy stream and Next Up. So shout outs to y'all and shout outs to Mo and to Cam. Those guys have been hella supportive. So, you know, I, I love them and appreciate them a lot. Jesus, dude, bro. Anytime Sonic Dream and Nico link, you, you know it's going to be one of those, bro. Like these guys go crazy, man. Um, but do not resurrect as an artist who I have not heard before. I think he definitely had, he definitely brought like something else to this, which was like, cool. I'm gonna tell you what, like, uh, Tonic Dream really, like this man really works too, bro. Like he's always working with like different artists, but there are certain artists that I just know you have chemistry with. And that's with bro right here, man. Like you guys just, just know what you're going to do. So that's, that's that. <laughs> that's Exit Life. Hope y'all liking it. I got some new stuff coming out very soon. Um, I guess at the time of this recording, Witching Hours should have already dropped. So Witching Hours out right now on all platforms. So go check that out. <clears throat> so go check that Oh my god, I can't talk. So go check that one out if you haven't already. Um, that one I did with Max Moon and Amac, and that's a fun. That's going to be a fun story too. Um, I'm going to have a How I Made It for that one too. So stay tuned, and I'll see you all later. Peace.